So welcome to my round two update. Um, didn't have the best week. I mean, I didn't have a terrible score, but it's not a $50,000 score. 2,227. Dropped to 7.8k in the rankings. That's not good at all. But um, I think the team's in okay, Nick. So it's not the end of the world. I had a, I did nothing this weekend. All I did, I just watched football all weekend. Went out for dinner. That was pretty much it. That's probably me when I'm 50 years old, but um, not very interesting. I think I'm going away next week. Uh, I'll be good because all I do is check scores all weekend and I'm not sure there's internet where I'm going. So, actually, that would be bad if there's like any injuries or laid outs, but um, yeah, see what happens. So, yeah, the team. And. Um, all round was okay. Jake Lloyd, 71 is pathetic, so I traded him in last week. I didn't start him because I thought McVeigh would take all his points. And then I just traded him in and I didn't I didn't think properly. Um, so McVeigh, he didn't play that well, but he took all his points. So that's not good. So I'll have to hold Lloyd. McVeigh will get injured eventually, so that kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, rookies were really good, so Murray was crap, but I'm still going to start him on field. Um, man, Tom Mitchell is the truth. Wow, he's, I think he's my favorite player. I think he's the fourth best player in the comp, but besides um, Franklin, Danger, and Martin. I think the fact that he can't go forward and like take contested marks and stuff like will hurt his ability to ability to like be the best player in the comp. But man, he was unbelievable. He kicked I think two goals, set up a few, bursted from a clearance, got tagged, forty touches. Unbelievable. So love Tom Mitchell. Vice captain and captain um will be permanently on him. So Kelly was bad. He got one at eight, so that's fine. Now Matt Crouch Be good if he stretched his hamstrings or just took up, uh, looked after himself a bit more. LeBron James never, ever gets injured, and like ever, and he's like 34, so or something like that. So really disappointing from Matt Crouch. You got to look after yourself. So yeah, he has to be traded. Crows played better without him. I'm, I am a little salty, but um, yeah, that hurts a lot. So, oh well, that five was good. Parker went missing. The rest of the midfield was good. I didn't start Kelly and Holman. Not smart. Well, I had one slot, so not starting Kelly again. Uh, that's killer, but I just thought Brayshaw would do better this week, and I was wrong, so very wrong. Um, yeah, anyway. Goldstein, he should have killed Longer. Man, Longer is not a good ruckman at all. And he got injured. He was rucking against Cameron Bruce in the fourth quarter. So I thought he should have got more than 123, but you can't really complain with that. He's going to get smashed by Gorn next week, so I'm going to brace for that. And Midford was good. Walters and McLean were excellent. And they have low ownership, so that's really good for me. Um, Sicily, <laughs> man... This guy, um, so he's got he's reported this week. He played awfully, turned it over a fair bit, gave away that stupid fifty, like ran twenty or thirty meters just to shove Selwood into the turf and give away a fifty because Selwood ducked for a free kick. Um, but other than that, he kind of kept his cool for, for most of the time. It was just Selwood that got got on his nerves, so and the rookies were crap. Last week I said I'm going to start Garlet. I'm sorry um, people copied me. Um, I underestimated Gold Coast and overestimated Carlton and overestimated Garlet. So he's never ever starting for me ever again. So yeah. So what are my trades for this week? So Matt Crouch obviously has to go. And then we're going to do some DPP action. Garlet to the mids on the bench. We're going to trade in 
the man, three time All Australian, maybe four. Where is he? Robbie Gray. Love Robbie Gray. He's such a gun. He's playing more midfield this year. So Ken Hinckley said 50 50 split between midfield and forward. That was more than 50 50 on the weekend. And Rockcliffe, man, he's cooked. He's going to have to sit up forward. I think Rockcliffe's actually going to get dropped soon. Um, he'll find form eventually, but right now it's no good. So I think Robbie Gray will play more midfield. He's a dual All-Australian in the midfield. So, yeah. And Port, man, they look good. Um, so, yeah, Robbie Gray's in. And that's it, really. I might... Okay, this sounds stupid, but I might go Fife to Dangerfield. Because... Because it's Dangerfield. I think he's going to get better. He's gotten better every year. And I think he's gotten better. He'll get better this year again somehow. Um, like he barely played midfield against Hawthorne. And he's still got 130. If he played midfield the whole match. That was a 160-170 game from him. You can't afford to be missing all those scores. Especially because I don't have Martin either. So, And I'm just assuming that Fife's going to get injured. And he has a rough draw. It could backfire, like, 100%. Um, but, something to think about. More to do with how good Danger is than how good, than Fife. But, check the agenda real quick. Okay, so, if you don't have Tom Mitchell and Dusty, I think Mitchell you have to get in. I'm not sure how he's going to drop in price. He went below 98 once last year, so... Yeah, and Dusty. I didn't start Dusty. That was a huge mistake. But I just thought Richmond won't be as good this year. He peaked last year. Seems like he was in Vegas for like the whole off season. But I read someone made the point that Dustin actually gets better every time he goes to Vegas, not worse. So that's how it works with him. I've been to Vegas and you come out more confident from it. Like, I had, a, like, a small heckle war with, um... It was, like, a friendly thing with Robert from Everyone Loves Raymond, like, his comedy show. And I came out better for it. Like, he kind of destroyed me, but, um... Like, you leave Vegas feeling more confident because you were in Vegas and, like, weird, crazy things happen. Um, and just imagine what Dusty would have got up to... Like, who knows what he would have got up to there. Um, ten times worse than me, for sure, so... Yeah, not sure. I'd get in Mitchell, but for me, patience is virtue with Dustin Martin. Not sure he's going to drop, though, but I just have to hope. I can't get him in. Um, yeah, Dangerfield already discussed. Toronto's an interesting one. He's improved a lot this year, but I wouldn't get him in. Maybe sideways to Bell. If you have Bell, you can sideways to Toronto. But I don't see him as like a keeper. I think he can average like 90. I'm not sure that's enough. Um, so no. So Jack Billings. He was really good last week. He was really poor this week. Lucky to get 79. It's not Jack Billings that's the problem. It's Alan Richardson and St Kilda. They're in trouble this year. Like they are awful. I think Richardson's lost the players. Like, he's as vanilla as a soft serve, that guy. If you watch AFL 360 and Alan Richardson's on, you go to sleep straight away. But, like, if, like, Alistair Clarkson's on, you just listen, because you know he's going to say something good. Um, so I think you're in a tough spot as a Billings owner. I mean, it's like a sin to trade him out, but... Um, I don't like... I didn't like what I saw on the weekend, so... Maybe wait and see a little bit. If things go downhill, maybe trade him. Hmm, not sure. It's a tough one. I mean, he's a good player, but again, it's it's the St Kilda problem. I don't think they'll bounce back. They're going to get flattened by Adelaide this week. Now, Beams, he didn't have much of a preseason. Trade him. And um, that was like family related. related. Uh, Vince and... Um, what's his name? Vincent Lewis are taking all of Hibbard's points. And like the fantasy freaker guy on Twitter, the champion data guy, um, reset this. 
So the fantasy Frico guy said that like Lewis and Vince are taking like more kick-ins and getting more possessions in the defensive half, which is hurting Hibbert a lot. So it's not really Hibbert's fault that he's not scoring as well. It's just Melbourne's coaching. So I think he's going to drop in price. I'd trade him. To who? I don't know. Um, Hurley and Yo looking pretty good, so maybe them. Um, Omira, he sucks. Um, trade him. Just for anyone. Just trade him. 70s. He's not going to make any money. So he might actually actually lose money. Um, if you have the money, you can trade him to Keneally or something. Um, so Tim English, I traded in English. It might seem like a bad move this week, but I thought he was fine. He competed a lot. He just lost pretty much every contest. So, hold English. I think they'll play him. Jordan Ruffhead was actually worse than English somehow. But, yeah, I think he'll keep playing and we can just hold him on the bench. And we have some good games. We have some bad games. Might be a slow burn, but see how see what happens. And Liam Ryan. I don't have Liam Ryan. Um, if you don't have him... Not sure it's worth trading him in. I don't think he's going to score very well. Honestly, I could have got 100 points against the Dogs' defense the way they're playing. Maybe not, but you know their defense is terrible at the moment, injuries and stuff. So Franklin plays the Dogs in two weeks. That's a eight goal minimum from him. Um, that's all really. Not much to discuss. So the team's in reasonable nick. We can start Kelly and Holman this week, which will be great. Um, so yeah, I might get in Dangerfield for five. That's probably not the smartest thing to do, but I'd probably be banking on something bad happening to five, which is not ideal, but I think it can happen. Five's pretty injury prone. So that's all. Not much else I can think of to discuss. If there's something like in the news, I'll talk about it, but there's nothing... Um, Nothing of significance this week, but good luck this week. Um, trade, trade, trade. Trading is so fun, so you can trade, use them all up. Um, I say that with a little bit of sarcasm, but you know. Anyway, good luck this week, and have a good week.